Hey guys, so today we're going to continue our discussion on backup power for grid down situations. We already covered the tight budget, the medium budget, and now we're going to talk about the really good stuff. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're talking about $14,000 budget here. And what I want to show you is this type of system. Again, we're not necessarily pushing the EG4. Um, they're like for these batteries, for example, you have the EG4, you have the Jack up here, the SOKs, uh, Battleborn Arcs. There's a lot of them. A lot of folks make these server based, you know, each one of these rack mounted batteries is typically five kilowatt hours and they run about 1500 bucks, which is fantastic. For this example, I'm putting three of them together. So it's going to give you 15 kilowatt hours. That's part of this budget. And we're also looking at these all-in-one inverters. This happens to be the EG4. Again, you could get, look at a grow watt. You could look at an MPP. Other people make them. And they're similar price performance. But let's just look at this as an example case. Here, I'm taking two of these. They're 1250 bucks each. Two of these, three batteries, a transfer switch. We're going to run all this right into our home panel. And then we're going to add 5,000 watts of solar. This is just an example. Uh, this is a 5,000 watt array in my backyard, part of my system. Um, you could go up to 16,000 watts with two of these. I think it's 8,000 watts per, um, per unit. So with all that, our specs, we're, this thing will put out 13,000 continuous watts, man. That's a lot of power. I mean, you can run almost your whole house on that. And I'm, a lot of people could easily run their house on that. Um, we also have 15 kilowatt hours. Again, this is the 14,000 example. You can scale this up to whatever you want. Or you could even scale it back down and go the other direction if you want. But I think this is a good price point. What can you run? Well, because I put two of these together, we can split phase it to 240 and run that well pump. Now you got water. That's huge. And we can heat the water and run our water heater, refrigerators, window units, mini splits, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff you can run off of this system. The only thing I wouldn't run maybe is my um, big heat pumps. And you could probably even get away with that if you put a soft start on it. So for the pros, it's 120, 240. Solar rechargeable. You're never going to run out of fuel here. You can run this thing for 20 years plus right you don't got to worry about that quiet clean power you got the sine wave run your sensitive electronics and this is a big one man pays for itself over time so if you went out and got one of those 22k whole house generators by the time you put in a 500 gallon propane tank you're going to be at the same budget 14k now look at what you got with that system, it's just going to sit there for years until you have a big storm. Then you're going to run it for a week, and it's going to cost you about 1500 bucks a week in gas just to run it. Whereas this system is going to run your house every day, 24-7. It's going to pay for itself over time. And when you're running it, it costs you nothing. You're using the sun. So why would anybody get... Why would you spend 14000 on a system that sits there, doesn't do anything, versus this guy, for the same price, going to run your house all the time, pay for itself, and cost nothing when you use it? I don't know. This doesn't make any sense to me, but um, I think this is, a, this is the way to go, right? Uh, hugely expandable. I mean, um, I'm currently uh, pricing out 12 of these. I'm looking to build a 60 kilowatt hour backup to my current system. I mean, you just can't beat the price performance here. I don't know that it'll ever go, well, we'll see if it goes lower than that or not. And, uh, yeah, just, just really, you get a lot here for your money, I think. The only disadvantage, and, and don't quote me on this, guys, I don't own this system, so I can't really speak with authority on how it actually performs. Um, but I do own this system, and the difference, I think, is that this guy has a true, like, copper-wound transformer. Uh, this is like a 60-pound brute force 
transformer and it handles inductive loads and heavy loads really well for a long period of time. So starting these well pumps and water heaters on this transformer based uh, inverter is really not a problem in the long run. Now I'm not sure about this, but I think this is a high frequency, it's more of a smart solution that relies on a lot of electronics to make that happen. And I'm not sure that over time it might not be as happy with big heavy loads starting and stopping, those big inductive loads for motors and things like that. So um, I'm sure if you were just running like a server farm, you could probably crank 10,000 watts continuous out of it all day and night and then run forever. But I'm a, just a little bit, I have a little reservation about that. And that's, that's my only thing. If you know something about that, put it in the comments for everybody to to uh, read. So anyway, I think the last thing I'll say about this is if I were starting out today, this is what I'd probably do. You know, for the money and performance, uh, you just can't beat it. I mean, it's fantastic. All right, so let's move on. I'll show you what I did six years ago. Okay, so if we move up to 32,000, uh, this is the system that I built for myself here about six years ago. Um, so 32,000 did not include any labor. I did it all, it was all DIY. Um, I've got a whole series that, of videos that explain how to build this start to finish. So I'm not going to go into details here. I just want to give you an overview. Uh, after tax was 22 grand for this system. So a few notes. Uh, basically, this system is bulletproof. Um, it's really, really strong. Haven't had any problems with it. Uh, it's only been shut down twice. I just shut it off temporarily twice in six years just to um, add to it, basically. So, I mean, it just runs, you know. There's really, it's not much fun. <laughs> it's not much of a hobby, you know. It just works. But anyway, uh, you got two inverters here. You could put up to four, and they put out 4,400 watts each. Uh, these are the charge controllers. There's three of them, and they can produce up to 100 amps each at 48 volts. <clears throat> um, there's uh, like load centers. This is the AC side, the DC side. There's a controller, and I got a whole bunch of other stuff involved here in this design with transfer switches that allow me to bring in AC power from multiple sources, from generators, from the utility. It can charge my battery bank that way or, you know, it's just a lot of options is what I wanted. For outputs, I have three of these um, multi-switch transfer switches. So I'm running, uh, what is it, 20-something circuits right into the house. And I put in a lead acid battery so I wouldn't do that now but back then it was price performance was was the best option and it's still not bad I mean I have 16 of these Trojan batteries uh, the key to this is you don't it says you can run them down to 50 percent you don't want to do that so if you got lead acid you only want to use like the top 20 percent of the battery bank and then it should last a really long time. If you if you discharge at 50%, you're just you're gonna go through them in about two or three years. Uh, I'm on year six and they're going strong. I hope to get another six years out of them. We'll see. Uh, this is my solar. I've got a ground mount and a roof mount, so a total of about 13,000 watts. That's all included in this price. That's a big chunk of it, right? So for specs, we got 8,800 8, 8, watts continuous, 17,000 peak. You know, you notice the big difference here? That's how you can tell it's a transformer and not a high frequency switched system. Uh, let's see, 13,000 watts of panels and 15 kilowatt hours of usable. Yeah, it's, it could be, you could say it's more than that, but I only use about 10 overnight and that's about 20% of the bank. What will it run? Just about everything. So it is a uh, split phase 12240. I get my well pump, I get water, water heater, refrigerator, freezers. I mean, I'm running all this stuff right now, actually. I got two window units going, a mini split going, TVs, the pool pump. I run everything except the big um, 
you know, heat pumps. We have three large heat pumps on the house that run off the utility. So it's kind of like I have a system of air conditioners that run off solar and a system that run off the utility and I can, you know, use either one. It's like two is one, one is none kind of thing. Same thing for heat. Um, anyway, pros are 12240, solar rechargeable, you're never going to run out of fuel. This system should last me at least 20 years. Probably a lot longer than that. Uh, it's quiet, clean power, clean sine wave. Uh, it's going to pay for itself over time. I'd say we got about another six years and it'll pay for itself, but really that doesn't even matter to me that much. What matters to me is being self-sufficient, guys. I mean, I want to make sure that we're going to have power. Now, I know uh, some people might not think it's that important. I, I put power in the same category as food and water. You know, we're not going to live without it. Now, you might be able to run out to the woods with some fire starter and paracord and be happy, but that, not me. <laughs> that's not happening. So, I mean, hey, good for you, man. If that's your thing, but uh, not happening here. So I want to make sure, that's why I spent all this money, to make sure that our power is not going to go out. Even if the utility goes down for 10 years, we're going to have power. And we're going to be able to preserve our food and freezers and refrigerators, run the freeze dryer, have water, endless supply. You know, that's the plan, right? And this is a huge piece of our, of our uh, self-sufficiency plan right here. All right, so... Yeah, I got the transformer based, you know, takes the big inductive loads. And expandable, this has been very easy to expand. I could put two more inverters on here and and I think I will actually eventually ditch this lead acid for some of those um, you know, SOKs or maybe the the EG4s or whatever, um, those rack mounted batteries probably put in about 60 kilowatt hours and then this thing's gonna run just like the utility because right now I'm trying to save this bank so I turn my air conditioners to utility overnight but if I up this thing to a 60 kilowatt hour battery bank I'll just leave everything on at 24 7 and it'll just run like the utility pretty much so um, like I said I'm super happy with this system it does everything has a million options bulletproof it's never been down I never have to touch it uh, it's just great so what would I do if I were just starting out so let's say you, you don't have anything yet you're just getting into this you know where should you go well if you got the money I would probably go with that fourteen thousand dollar system with the all-in-ones and the um, lithium iron phosphate server rack mounted batteries and just build it out as big as you can afford I'd probably do that if I had the money if I was on a tight budget I think I'd start off with um, something in the 3000 watt inverter range inverter generator range and then store a little fuel safely I'd start off with that because that'll solve most of your problems right there and then that'll get you through those storms and everything like that and then um, then don't buy anything else. Just save your money until you get to that 14k and you can put in a system like this. And I think that's what I would do anyway, but hopefully this will give you some ideas and some thoughts and, and uh, maybe give you uh, just a little insight into which way you could go. But thanks for watching guys and I'll see you on the next one.